why is the NFL purposefully driving down the stock value of the NFL running backs? What's going on? This is Coach Marcus for Pro Fan Talk. And what are they doing to my people? What are they doing to my running backs, man? Uh, we're not going to last too much longer the way they're doing us uh, in the league right now. They are driving down the value of the running backs. I don't understand the purpose of it. I mean, I do understand the purpose of it because at the end of the day, it's just like going to a casino. Most of the time, the house wins. They want to show you the person that just hit the progressive on the slot machine because they want to show you the person winning the money. If you go to a casino, you want to play the slot machines that are closest to the door because it seems like the optics of it is all of the slot machines that are usually visible by people just walking by are the ones that usually hit the most at least and you can ask anybody that goes to casinos on the regular to verify that they want people on the outside looking in to be able to see people hitting and winning money and that'll bring in more traffic because regardless of what you see most of the time the house wins and that's just, this is what they're doing with the with the nfi running backs this situation with saquon barkley is crazy he's responsible for 30 percent of your offense 1300 yards and 10 touchdowns and you playing around with his contract now, if you want to go back and look, now you understand why Debo Samuels didn't want to be labeled as a running back. You can still play me there every now and then, but list me as a wide receiver because I want to get paid what wide receivers make. Smart business move. And whoever told him to do that, that's the agent I want. Why are they devaluing the running back situation? You look at what DeAndre Swift did in Detroit and they dropped him like a bad habit. They got the next hot thing coming in Jameer Gibbs. Maybe he'll be good. Maybe he won't. You never know with these situations. How many of these Heisman winning, Heisman trophy nominee, all American running backs have come out and made it to the league and didn't really do anything. Didn't really do much of anything. So it's always a gamble, but the running backs that are in the league and that have established themselves as premier elite level players in the league, they should be getting paid. And let me be honest with you. Now you look at what, Miles Sanders did making his money in Carolina. And it's not like he's making a ton of money. He got a much better contract offer than he would have gotten with the Eagles. I know you guys saw that graphic. All of the running backs we've got equal what Miles Sanders is getting in Carolina. Collectively, we've got four running backs and collectively they're making about seven million a year. Miles Sanders has got a contract for almost eight. They're playing the long game. They're playing the business game. And I understand that. But you got to take it past that because when you see somebody like Saquon Barkley, when you see somebody like Austin Eckler and what he had to fight through, Austin Eckler is different because he, ultimately he got paid. But he had to take it to the nth degree. He had to talk about sitting out and doing all of that kind of stuff. And finally, he got his bag. Now, mind you, 915 yards rushing, 4.5 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns on the ground, 107 receptions, 722 yards receiving, and five touchdown receptions. That's a lot of offense. Let's just give a wide receiver the same amount of touches. Matter of fact, let's say you're talking about 107 receptions in a year, 722 yards, five touchdowns, 6.7 a reception. You give that to a wide receiver and see what he gets. 18 total touchdowns. So again, you're looking at the totality of impact that Austin Eckler had on the offense. And finally, uh, they signed him in March, $36.5 million deal. Total, he got $36.5 million in guaranteed money, making him the highest paid in the NFL. And he's going to make probably about $12.6 a year. Miles Sanders, four-year, four $25.4 million contract with the Carolina Panthers. $13 million 13 million guaranteed and a $5.9 million signing ball. Miles Sanders in Carolina, his base salary is going to be, and then I believe it's going to like go up. It's going to vary a little bit every year, but he got the bulk of his money up front. He got his almost $6 million up front. And collectively, the Eagles running back room is barely even touching that, or at least equaling it. But why are they trying to value the running backs like that? You see what's going on with Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott hasn't sign with anybody because now they got the next thing Pollard. Eventually Pollard's going to want his money. You see what Saquon is doing. You see what Josh Jacobs is doing. He's in the same boat. So it's like, why don't teams want to value running back? I've heard it been said that maybe don't go for a four-year deal, go for a three-year deal and get more money up front. The same problem is still going to remain. Once you get out of that contract and the next hot running back or group of running backs come out in a draft, guess what a team's going to do? Try to start from square one. However, the only way you can get around that is is by upping the, the rookie price for the running back. They've got it set 
almost like grocery. Quarterbacks get paid this much. Offensive linemen get paid this much. Running backs this much. Wide receivers this much. DBs, linebackers, D tackles. So every position has got their price point. But as a position player, how do you raise that price point for the entire league? That's a difficult proposition. And the league is taking advantage of that. Because you can't tell me Austin Eckler, with all he brings to the table, should have to fight for a contract. Saquon Barkley, of all people, shouldn't have to fight for a contract. Josh Jacobs, number one in the league in rushing, shouldn't have to fight for a contract. Because they put it down, they earn their money, uh, and they earn the opportunity. I like to look at it just the same way you would as a quarterback. Yes, a quarterback is more important, but there is no other position on the field that GMs and owners make more mistakes on when it comes to money than the quarterback. No other position. Everybody misses. I'm going to read some names off to you. Elvis Gerback, Kerry Collins, Matt Flynn, Brock Osweiler, Mike Glennon. Those are just people I'm, I'm looking at. Elvis Gerback was signed by the Baltimore Ravens the year after they won the Super Bowl for $30 million. And ain't no way in hell Elvis Gerback was worth $30 million. And they knew that. I don't even think he had a couple good games. They got rid of uh, Trent Dilfer because Trent Dilfer was an average quarterback. They win the Super Bowl. They say, hey, we could be even better with this defense and a, and a better quarterback. So they signed Elvis Gerback. Didn't turn out very well. 16 touchdowns and 23 turnovers and in 2001. And they paid him $30 million. Somebody wasn't doing their homework. Kerry Collins, the year after Rich Gannon took the Raiders to the Super Bowl, I believe he got hurt, neck injury in 2004. The Giants had just signed Kurt Warner. Yeah, they released Kerry Collins. Kerry Collins signed with the Raiders. Three-year contract, 16.8. He goes 7-21. But somebody did their homework, Matt Flynn. I, I had forgotten about Matt Flynn even playing in the league until I did my homework on him. He turned three hours worth of work into a whole lot of money. He replaced Aaron Rodgers in Week 17, in 2011 and he torched the Detroit Lions 480 yards six touchdowns now before that he had what 535 yards and three touchdowns and four interceptions on 88 career attempts so he had a great game flash in the pan lightning in the box and because of that game the Seahawks gave him 10 million guarantee and then the Seahawks ended up signing Russell Wilson gave him 10 million up front on a three-year 26 million dollar deal but they did their homework so they just gave that money away Brock Osweiler, second pick, second round pick of the Broncos. Again, they did their homework. Four years behind Peyton Manning. You think he would have learned something, but when it's time to step up to the plate, everybody doesn't have it like that. But they still get that money. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you got all of these GMs and owners that go on and on and on about trying to be a winner, wanting to win the championship. We got our guys on the ground. We did our research. We watched the tape. And they'll give you all of those excuses. But there is no excuse in the world why the most expensive and most important position on the field is the one that everybody misses the most. What are you looking for? What kind of value are you trying to bring to your team? The reason why I bring that up and bringing it back to the running backs is, is if you're looking at a running back by position and you say, because of this position, we can only pay that much money because that's what the market demands. And I understand that supply and demand. However, when you have running backs that are 25, 30, 35% of your offense, productive, not to mention all of the stuff that happens off the field. Are you the face of the franchise? Are you a good face for the league? Are you putting your team first? Because of you, are you selling jerseys? Are you bringing up the brand? There's a lot of other things that come into factor other than what you do on the field. But rest assured, what you do on the field is the most important part of it. And why they keep driving the, they're taking the price of the running back on purpose. Now, I know a lot of good running backs can come out. They're not always going to be like Derrick Henry. They're not always going to be like Austin Eck. They're not always going to be like Josh Jacobs. And they're definitely not going to be like Saquon Barkley. What's going to happen with, with B. John Robinson when his time comes? Because ultimately, this comes down to the owner. This comes down to what is a player doing for your franchise and are you willing to pay for it? You'll pay way too much money for a quarterback that doesn't deserve it and you will get nowhere near the production that is required for your team to win, but you'll do it anyway. Now you have situations where everything looks good and a player, just, you just swing and miss. If Russell Wilson plays in 23, like he played in 22, well, you know what? Denver just sw swung and missed. For whatever reason, he ran out of gas. His talent is not there no more. I don't believe that's going to be the case, but if it did happen, I understand. Sometimes you just swing and miss. Nick Foles is here, wins the Super Bowl. He goes somewhere else and he never has the same success. When he was with Chicago, no. When he was when he was starting with the Rams, no. Nick Foles has never 
finished a season as a starter, but they paid him that money. And again, you can go on and on and on and on all of these places. You look at Arizona, Denver, Miami. My point is, is that teams spend or waste so much money on quarterbacks and they know they're not going to be any good. They just hoping. If you can do that with a quarterback, you can definitely do it with a running back, especially when you're talking about somebody with character and the work ethic and just the overall the overall product that is Saquon Barkley. This kid is good for your franchise. This kid is a, is a good look on the NFL. He's good in New York community. You want to buy your kid a Saquon Barkley a jersey. You want to spend money on that because you know what this kid represents. Came from Penn State, hard worker, went to class, yes sir, no sir kind of guy, very respectful. That's what you want to, to be the face of your franchise. Saquon Barkley is the face of that franchise, not Daniel Jones. I don't care what anybody says. You go in that stadium and you count how many Danny Dimes jerseys are there as opposed to Saquon Barkley. You're going to see a hell of a lot more 26 jerseys. But they constantly devalue us because that's what the market says. Well, what is the guy that's bringing it to your team? What is somebody that's bringing the production to your squad? And I understand you can throw the argument in that such and such got hurt. He's got a hit. That part I understand. But when somebody comes back and then they put it down and then they stay healthy, when they load up eight man in the box because that running back is not going to beat it. Everybody that played the Giants knows if you stop Saquon, you got a good chance of winning. The Giants weren't there yet. Danny Jones, not there yet as a quarterback. So guess what? Saquon Barkley is the escape plan. Give it to Saquon. Put him in the pass pattern. Give him the screen. Get the ball in his hands and let him work his magic. And eventually, something is going to happen. And that was, for the most part, how Saquon worked last year. Everybody, the game plan was to stop Saquon, and you could beat the Giants. But every now and then, they would feed him, feed him, feed him, feed him, and he would get stuffed and stuffed and stuffed. But every now and then, he would break a 40-yard. He would break a 30-yard. He would beat the linebacker and catch that pass. It was just a matter of time before he broke one because that's the type of player he is. Now, what happens if he starts to get help? So now that puts another puts you in another dilemma because, okay, now we don't have to use him that much. So now is he not as valuable as he used to be? And that's not even the case. You need Saquon Barkley on that team. Danny Jones ain't ready. Sorry. You're going to learn today. So I, I really hope that Saquon sticks to his gun. And maybe you'll find out and you'll see how much he's worth. The hell with what they say. How many times will they sign a quarterback, a backup, or something like that and pay him a ridiculous amount of money when you know he's not worth it? You go back and look at his history at every other team. It could be average at best, but they'll still pay quarterbacks a lot of money because they're quarterback. And they could be the reason you lose, but you still pay them the money. Pay Saquon his money. Stop devaluing running backs. Is this something that's going to have to go to the CBA? But even if it goes to the CBA, if they try to figure out a way where they can get the most value for these players. How do you put that in the CBA? How do you tell the owners they have to pay for this? How do you do that? I don't know. It seems to me that someone like Saquon or Austin Eckler or Josh Jacobs, the only thing those guys can do is say, okay, we're not going to play. So you can see how much you miss us because everybody's not going to be somebody like Pacheco with the Chiefs. Pacheco balled out last year, but he's on a rookie deal and is probably making next to nothing. So he can continue to ball out, play out his rookie contract and be stellar. And when he gets to the point where he has to renegotiate a new contract, are they going to take care of them? It comes down to the owner. Are you going to play business or are you going to protect your team? Based on the way Mahomes is operated, taking lower deals so you can get players back in and stuff like that, you would hope that the Chiefs would take care of a kid like that if he stays healthy and everything like that. But there's no guarantee. So we got to figure out something. If you like this content, hit subscribe, click that notification bell, and I will see you on the next play. Peace.